my friends and I were all into skateboarding, so of course we inevitably just got into like punk rock. When you're a kid and you're hearing a whole track of just like repeated screaming with a little bit of a beat, you're just kind of like, oh, okay. So I think that kind of gave me a weird, strange head start. Thrasher magazine, there was a Mike Muir issue and I can't remember what year it is, I think like 86, and they had an article in there about Steve Albini's Big Black. And in the article, they explained lots of things. This music will make you, quote unquote, shit your pants or die trying. Lots of terms like grinding and just how, how vicious it was. And all there was was a picture of Steve Albini with a white t-shirt on and his like waist strap and his guitar. And then he just had a bit of blood. Of course, my friends and I were just like, oh my God, we need to hear them. Everything kind of changed. It went from just like punk rock, like, you know, like, like Black Flag and the, the Dead Kennedys to this more like vicious grinding stuff that focused on more just like the, the darkest parts of Americana. And so when you really look at it, it's really setting a stage for everything that Harsh Noise is about. Of course, we found out that Steve Albini collaborated with a band called Zeni Geva, and then we heard that, and we're like, oh my god, this is like heavy. So after that, we found out that the guy that, that heads up Zeni Geva, his name is KK Null, and he just does harsh noise. I was at that point where it was just, everything was like completely like torn down and abstracted into just a massive wall of of noise, like changing noise and rapid noise and vicious noise, no drums, no this, no that. And it was just like pulsing and it was, it was perfect. I'm like, okay, this is it. This is what I, I love. Of course, I wanted to also portray things I'm, I'm into and translate it into like harsh noise. I just straight up started with some of my first like true loves and I went straight to like genre cinema. So the, the project that I'm working on now is transforming one of my favorite American genre films of all time, Spike Teals and Black Nylons. So I'm trying to, to translate my favorite elements of this film into an avalanche of a textural sound or abrasive sound. It's best, especially when you're creating like, uh, like harsh noise or whatever, to keep everything analog, like my, my brand of it. Because any grain, any hiss from the, the VHS um, will be, will be when it's run through like uh, gated fuzz effects will translate into like really, really harsh, rough texture. So I didn't really like industrial at all. I was coming from more of like a punk rock place. I was just loving the feedback solos and when the songs would deteriorate. And then that's when my tastes started to really change. And then I'm finding that American noise, or what it's known as back then as 90s American noise, it's much more rough and dirty, and they like to hang on to sound a bit longer. 
So you're getting more of like, uh, like a really like a crunching, like an engine that's just like crunching along. And then I'm just like, okay, I think I like this more. And then I found out about more of the guys out of Italy. So I'm listening to like uh, Dead Body Love. And when I got that tape, it was the most magnificent document of just crunching. So yeah, so I've already kind of work, worked out what I want from this movie. And it's, it's gonna be mostly the uh, dialogue because dialogue will have the, the hiss in the background and everything. And music is sometimes too hard to like blow out in, into like straight fuzz. But I thought I'd show, this is my favorite scene I think almost in any film ever. And just this, this, this sequence right here, just everything about it is just fucking absolutely perfect. And again, I think, I think of these films as kind of like the core of, of cinema. The more that I like have gone through genre films for years and years and years, I just keep like paring them down. I think that the, 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 the lines that, that, that these movies create are kind of like just like the most like pared down, like purest form of film. But yeah, so I'm just gonna find that the things I like which might take a bit. I already had a past in the fine arts. I always think of sound completely in terms of like painting. Abstraction has always played a really, really important role in the way I contemplate sound and the way I disfigure sound, like a, a purity in form. I like to run it through cassette tape first. Like this, I've even got it like marked ahead of time so I know exactly it's gonna be all spiked heels and black nylons. And then I like to get the volume through the stereo going, nice and loud. So it picks it up. So yeah, it's just gonna make it an incredibly rough, dirty recording of this dialogue. Look, I told you I need another girl for tonight's entertainment. Now get off your dead butt and go out and find one. And stop playing around with Myrna over there. Look, I pounded that pavement all day. Why don't you let your new girl participate? Look, she stays out of this, you understand? You can't, she stays out of this. Okay, okay, baby. But if I were you, I'd uh, keep an eye on Sybil if you want to do a solo with that chick. <laughs> if that little hophead touches her, I'll kill her. Wait, Reba. You don't have to go out looking for another girl. So that's the movie, or what I wanted from the movie. Older albums I did that was just like a, an unchanging hour of just like a, like, a, like a line of crunching noise. There was a lot of people that called it harsh noise purity. So it was just like a purifying of harsh noise, like getting rid of the dynamics and everything and just trying to see if just the, the crunching textures was enough to just enjoy and like contemplate. For me, it just kind of got more into to concentrating on the exact sounds that I ab absolutely love. And then eventually transforming all of my different obsessions and interests directly into that sound. And trying to see if I can translate very non-musical samples into crushing like layers of abrasive sound. Okay, so now I'm gonna run the, the tape through some uh, biased out and really gated fuzz effects. And um, 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, just slowly kind of keep adjusting them and everything until I get the sound I want and layer it also with just some nice crunchy hiss. Okay, so I've got a nice like bassy hiss going, but I, I haven't even fired up the, the tape yet. So anyway, so it's working. That's the dialogue from the film kind of translated into a kind of like cracking harsh noise through like the... Like so any sound that's going on in the film right now is creating that cracking out sound. Okay, so I like that a lot. So I'm going to rewind the tape and then get exactly what I want going here, like layered, crackling. It's sounding even better than I hoped because I'm getting like, just from that dialogue and the women moving around on the screen and, and talking and like opening and closing doors and like, I'm getting like this massive kind of like crackling just distorted sound. When amplified like live through a massive PA it would just be like an avalanche of sound. When it hits you that you just absolutely love that sound, you, 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 you really start thinking about how there's nothing crazy about harsh noise or noise or like, or sound art because even the most normal people in the world love sound. So lots of gain, lots of like gated fuzz biased out fuzz. When you hear it here, you know that there's something going on, almost like a, like phantom voices coming through. And if we put some like microphones on, on nylons afterwards and layer that as well. I mean, the women, they're talking about, about doing sex work in like a brothel. I really, really just like sincerely love this sound. And now I want to make my own. I want to see if I can kind of like articulate what I want from it exactly. Maybe like 21 years ago, I took 45 rare jaw all the films from old like imports and bootlegs. And I made this insane hour and a half long compilation of every murder scene. It was made up around like 45 films. I just used that compilation and I ran it through tons of distortion and I put it on top of each other and just built like a wall of it until it was this massive avalanche of sound that was completely taken from the sounds of like a Jaw Lalo film. If you're into Italian genre films, you always kind of start with horror, then you move into giallo, then you start to find out about the gorgeous actresses, and you start to get fascinated with the actresses. Then you find out that most of these actresses, giallo films were just kind of like a, like a side thing. They were, most of them were in sexy comedies. So then you start watching tons of those. I guess this is when I start to like bare my soul, but it's just like I've always had like a fascination with like women in nylons, being like a punk rock kid too, and dating lots of like girls that were like goss and like new wavers and all that kind of stuff. Like their aesthetic I always thought was incredible with tons of makeup and they always had like torn tights on and all that kind of stuff. So of course right away it just started to hit me that I'm just like, I really want to start completely generating sound from something as subtle as nylon on like a woman's skin.
ready to go. That's it. <clears throat> Working with all these amazing boy, like women are artists, I'd have them like rigged up in like microphones and as they moved around the room, any movement they made would just cause like this massive like crushing sound and working with nylon and working with like women's makeup and like I, I found out ways to like rig it up so that even a woman that's applying on copious amounts of makeup can also translate into these like walls of abrasive noise and all the subtleties of all their, of them basically building a mask. nylon to like streamline their their look to like block it out like a like an abstract painting where detail is now being painted in with all black so I'm seeing all these like connotations and parallels with like again with like minimalist art A lot of my work in the past is shamelessly erotic. When I think about the actresses, they were obviously a major influence on a lot of my Jalo, like harsh noise releases and everything as well. But I also had like a profound fascination, especially with like early films about sex workers, with like early like flapper films, and and like 1920s and early 30s pre-code like vamp films. So when I started to like read about ballet and its culture and I saw that it had all these insane roots in like in courtesan culture and sex work, the more I read about it, it's like no, no matter how much it's kind of defined as like a performing art, it has like all these incredible stories of like rich men that would pick the, the dancers up after performances in like Paris and it was a huge part of it. It's like this is like kind of like the, like an abstracted vision of like a female. I've never really embraced violent sex and all that. I'm very clear about the fact that I'm looking at a woman at how she is represented in society. And that's usually in an incredibly abstract way, a very unreal way. And that's the way I'm looking at them. And other women that I work with also are infatuated with that idea. So it'd be it eroticism, or be it like wearing stockings that like that basically make you look different, like they they smooth you, they change your form, or to like makeup or like hairstyles, and just all the societal like pressure, but also all the women that absolutely love this, 
as well. I think my conscious effort to just always be aware of that. I'm not building an aesthetic that doesn't interest me. Everything that I, I work with still with the nylons and the tights and the ballet outfits and the point shoes and the use thereof and makeup and everything, I still want it to be attractive to me. Okay, so now the goal is to take what we did last time and add the nylon, direct nylon sounds that we just got. So this is from yesterday. This is all directly from the movie itself. All the women walking around, all the, the sounds from the amazing film, Spiked Heels and Black Nylons. And to make it even more completely layered and obsessed, I want to include what we just did. Okay, so now this is both the film and the direct nylon sources. So you get all the dialogue, all the dialogue and the aspects from the film. But then now you also have the added uh, dynamic of the nylons. And when really loud, it's pretty overwhelming. Classical ballet virtually took over my life. So it went from like spending tons and tons of money on like genre films every year to now all my my income is just spent on the ballet now. So I've got this insane closet I've turned into my ballet closet. It's just, <laughs> it's just ballet books and ballet magazines and ballet Blu-rays and I just can't fucking get enough of it. When I think about everything that's been been happening and as I keep like translating all of my own like obsessions and like interests and like aesthetic and everything and that I think this is it like I think the future of my work is just going to be completely rooted in the classical ballet. The culmination of it is so insane. And the makeup, the tights, the foot worship, the, the stamina, the physicality, like the culmination is so amazing. It actually dwarfs like anything else I've worked on. So when I think of all the work I've done with like flapper actresses and vamp actresses and European genre film actresses and, and their their looks and like genre film and everything, it's, just, it's, it's actually kind of, it's, it was actually like I was just training. I remember I had like a fine arts in instructor that would always got so angry when your pieces didn't really have anything to do with you in them. Like he was like, this isn't you. Even if it's like subconscious, like try as hard as I can to just make everything about my interests or the other artists I'm working with, culmination of interests or like, it's gotta be very much me, you know? 